Hello students and I welcome you to another segment of my C-section workshop. I am very very happy with the enthusiastic response and the queries that you people are putting forward towards me. They are very challenging some of them. And uh, in today's segment I am trying to answer to one of your challenging queries. The problem is, is that uh, the question that was asked to me it is uh, very difficult to you know uh, deliberately do it in a C-section for example uh, you know uterine artery ligation or a broad ligament hematoma because at some point in time in your career you get over to that place where you know or you foresee these outcomes and you uh, instead of you know plunging into them you take the necessary steps to avoid them and as a result of which don't encounter such uh, such uh, you know challenging uh, scenarios uh, still nevertheless if I ever heavens forbid do come across such a scenario I would love to record it and give it to you but usually the entire uh, you know scene in the OT is so, uh, so different everybody fails to uh, record those uh, like these catastrophic events and uh, so today I am trying to answer one of the queries which was asked by one of my very sweet um, student who is uh, currently taking the c-section workshop uh, she wants to know how we tackle the broad ligament hematoma. So a uh, few words about how to uh, tackle broad ligament hematoma. Number one, uh, how to first of all prevent such a uh, catastrophic event. See a broad ligament hematoma would usually form, would usually form in a case of previous C-section who has either had a scar dehiscence or a scar rupture and or and or uh, so you are giving an incision right on the previous C-section or you've gone too low even in a primary gravida or a previous C-section uh, patient in which the lower segment is absolutely flabby. If you've seen uh, cases like this, I'm sure many of you and everybody of you who's uh, seen repeated C-sections who have uh, uh, witnessed um, uh, so many uh, C-sections by now would know that every C-section is different. Sometimes the upper and lower segments are tough enough uh, uh, thick enough sometimes the lower segment is absolutely flail and flabby so usually the extension of uh, uh, you know um, the incision line into the broad ligament happens in such cases because of inadvertent you know uh, excessive force number one number two uh, usually while delivering the baby in, with an unrotated head and you've not been able to flex it properly enough uh, for the uh, incision to extend and number three and very important when you've given the inc incision a little too low Maybe the patient uh, was a deep transverse arrest or deep, the head is deep down in the pelvis and you think that, you know, giving a lower incision will help you ease of access towards the head, but it is not. So now I'll first of all tell you the preventive aspects, how to avoid a broad ligament hematoma. So first and foremost is number one, if it's a previous C-section and you already can see, you know, the scar dehiscence at a place, remember never to give an incision right over it move a little above and then give it. The reason is you need to anchor your stitches. What will you anchor your stitches on when it's already a dehiscent scar? So when you're giving a little above, that segment acts as the anchoring segment and as far as the dehiscent scar is concerned, you will take it in your bind. If you can understand what I'm saying, I'll try to show you in the model as well. But what I'm trying to say is that give an incision a little above, number one. Number two, uh, so if a patient is a primary gravida, let's say the lower segment is totally formed and now she's gone into a deep transverse arrest, the head is low down in the pelvis and you are anticipating a very difficult C-section. So what you do is even I have done when I was in my learning years, this problem, this, uh, this thing, and I found it absolutely normal to, you know what, open the abdomen and go as, you know, low as possible to access the head properly. But that's actually a big blunder to do stay above at the level of shoulder maybe palpate the shoulder and stay at the level of and even if you cannot palpate you are in a hurry or you are nervous or whatever be it because usually in such cases they are emergency c-sections and you want as early as possible you know the delivery of the head and you anticipate the head is low down so you go a little lower in the incision so that you can easily put your hand around it but that's never going to happen and don't even try to do that what usually will happen would be uh, the extension of the incision either in the vagina or in the bladder or right around the bladder so even the stitches will be very difficult to give and you might look forward to a vesicovaginal fistula later on so what you have to do over here is practice, practice and practice at even such panicky uh, situations, give an incision a little above so that that, that you know, the thin segment of the um, uterus, the lower segment doesn't stretch down 
with because in this case it will be a difficult delivery by now either the liker has drained number one number two the head is already jammed in the pelvis so most probably you will have to take out the baby through patvardhan uh, method that also i'm going to include very soon in my uh, workshop so uh, you will have to so in patvardhan method usually it so happens that the incision extends to one of the corners and it becomes very difficult even on a normal uterine segment to handle those incisions so my request to you will be to give those incisions a little above so that the uterine wall is thick enough not to just let loosely the incisions go anywhere so these are the preventive steps for uh, so that a broad ligament or any hematoma doesn't form an inadvertent extension of his incision doesn't take place so in the next segment i'll explain you how to handle these hematomas